Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new video. So Pop OS is actually one of my favorite Ubuntu based distributions because it offers also great support out of the box for Nvidia cards, if you have a laptop especially. And today we are going to have a look at the new version of Pop OS, which is called Cosmic Desktop. I'm going to go through the installer because there are some new things in there. And we are going to have a look also at the new features of the desktop. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So here I have a virtual machine booted up with the new Pop OS ISO and I'm going to go through the installer because there are some changes also in the installer that I would like to show you. So let's go ahead here and boot Pop OS and it's going to take a moment here to boot up the ISO and we'll be greeted by the GNOME desktop here and also by the installer. Now here we go, the machine is here. So let me first actually change my display resolution so that you can see also a little bit better here. So I'm going to choose the resolution of this display and bump up the scale and click apply. There you go. Keep the changes and now we can close this window. So this is the live ISO, but I would say let's go ahead here and install Pop OS anyway. So let's click select here. Just English is already there, so that's fine. And for the language United States, it's fine. And we can go to the keyboard layout. In my case, I'm going to choose the usual keyboard that I have here. And now we can choose whether we want to clean install or custom. So you will have to be aware here, if you choose the clean install, Pop OS will basically install the system with an EFI system partition. There is going to be also a root partition and a swap partition but there is not going to be a home partition. So if you would like to have that, you would have to choose the custom option here and create your partitions manually and assign also the corresponding mount points. Now I have done already a video on this on the channel, so I'm not going to do it here. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to go here for clean install and then click clean install. Now I need to select the drive. So I have only one drive here, so it's going to just use this one and click erase and install. Now this is new in the installer. We are going to actually configure already a user. So here we can change also the picture. If you don't want to have this one, we have already several in here, but that's fine with me. And I'm going to put in here the full name. Well, in this case, I'm just going to put the first name here and the username is fine and click next. And we need to choose a password for our user and confirm it. And now we can click next again. Now, this is going to give us some information about drive encryption. So if you want to do this, you have several choices. You can choose encryption password the same as the user account password. Or if you don't want to have that, just leave this checked off and click set password. Now, in my case, though, I don't need to have encryption here. So I'm just going to click don't encrypt. And now it's going to go ahead and install the system. So from here on, it's going to install the system as Pop OS usually does. So I'm going to pause the video here, guys, and I'll be back with you once the system is installed. So the installation is now done. And as you can see here, we have two options, shutdown and restart device. So I'm just going to restart the device to boot up directly in Pop OS here. So I'm just going to click this and it's going to reboot my virtual machine. So I can go here back to full screen. And as you can see, it boots directly. We have system deboot here in Pop OS as usual. Now I don't have Windows here or any other operating system, so we couldn't see the menu. But even I would have another operating system, I would have to adjust system deboot to display. So I've done a video about this also on the channel, so you can check that up if you want to have more information. Now let me enter here my password again. And I will have to probably again change my display resolution because we are booted up here in the machine. But before I do this, I need to go through here this welcome program. So I'm just going to click next here. Uh, keys are fine. And so this is actually new. You can see here, this is the new choices we have for the Pop OS Cosmic Desktop. This is the name of this release. So we can choose here between no dock. We can choose dock extends to edge, which is what we have right now. And we have dock doesn't extend to edges. So this is really a matter of personal preference, but I personally don't like to have the dock which extends to the edges. So I'm going to choose here dock doesn't extend to the edges. And you can see how it looks like. I'm going to click next. 
and configure the top bar. So here we can show the workspace button, which is here. We can show the applications button, which is also here. And the date and time and notification position is going to be in the center, but we can change this right here. Don't worry, we can change this also afterwards in the settings anyway. I'm gonna click next again. And here it's going to tell us about how we can open and switch applications by hitting the super key. It's going to open up here in the middle of the screen. I'm going to show you this in a second. And we have also gestures. Now, if you're installing this on a laptop, you will be happy to have this. I haven't tested this yet on my laptop. I'm going to do this maybe in another video, but this is good to have if you have a laptop anyway. Gestures are always useful on the trackpad. Now, location services here, you can choose whether to have them on or off. I'm going to leave them off here. And for the time zone, I'm going to go with my city and click next. And I'm going to skip online accounts for now and start using Pop OS. So again, I'm going to right click on the desktop here and change the display settings. And I'm going to select again the 4K display here, 200% and click apply. And this one looks much better to me. So here we are on the new Pop OS Cosmic desktop. So you can see here, we saw before anyway, that the dock is now on the bottom. Now let me open up the extensions by hitting the super key here. And you can see it opens up here in the middle this prompt here where we can search for files or applications. So I'm going to type in here extensions and hit enter. And these are the extensions that comes in pre-installed in Pop OS. So we have the Cosmic Desktop. We have the desktop icons, which right now are not displaying because they are actually turned off. If I right click here on the desktop and go to desktop icons settings, you can see we can show here the personal folder on the desktop and other things as well. But by default, they are all turned off. We have the Pop Cosmic, which we're going to look afterwards. We have the Pop Shell, which you probably already know. It's up here and we can choose whether we want to tile Windows or not. We have System76 Power. This is going to be useful if you have a laptop. You're going to be able to basically switch from integrated to dedicated graphic cards. And it's going to display usually here under the power options. Now, right now, I don't have it because this is anyway a virtual machine on the desktop. And then we have the Ubuntu app indicators, which are the small dots here appearing under the application. So this is all there is to it for the extensions. Now, if I want to change the Cosmic Dock or the Pop Cosmic, once I click here on the gear, you will see I'm prompted actually to go to the settings, not anymore here in the extensions. So that means if I close this up and open up the settings here, which are already docked in the dock, I can choose here, for example, desktop, and this is going to take care of all the options I have available on this version of Pop OS. So on general, we can choose what the super key does. So right now it's opening the launcher, what we saw before, but you can assign it to workspaces or applications. The hot corner right now is turned off, which is fine for me. And for the top bar right now, we saw the options we saw before. So we can choose whether to show the workspaces button, the applications button, and where we want to see the date and time and notifications positions. Now we have also here the show minimize button and the show maximize button here is not actually turned on. So we can choose to turn it on here. If you want to, you can see we have now the plus here. Now the background is self-explanatory. Appearance, you can choose the light and dark appearance, but you cannot choose the theme here. This I'm going to show you afterwards. Now, under the dock, we can choose what we want to do with our dock. So we can enable it or disable it if you don't want to have it. Now, I chose before actually not to extend the dock to the edges of the screen. That's why I turned off. Now, show the launcher on the dock, workspaces in the dock, applications in the dock, and mounted drives in the dock. These are all options that you can turn on and off. And one option which is very important for me is the dock visibility. Now, right now, it's always on always visible, which is not really convenient for me. We can choose always hide, which is also not particularly good in my case. So what I want to do is intelligently hide. That means, of course, that when you move a window over the dock here, it's going to disappear. So this is more practical for me because sometimes I want to have it, but when I work with applications full screen, I don't want to see the dock anyway. If you have multiple displays, you can choose also whether you want to have it on the primary display or on all displays. And also we can choose the dock size. So the dock size right now it's medium, but I'm going to go, for example, with small, which is enough for me. And you can choose also the position. So right now it's on the bottom of the screen, but we can have it also on the left and also on the right. 
it's really up to you. I'm going to go here for bottom again. Now for the workspaces here, we have also options for our workspaces. You can see, for example, here, this is new. The placement of the workspace picker right now is on the left. And that's because if I click here on the workspace picker, you will see it appears here on the left side. Now, if you want to have it on the other side, of course, you can choose along the right side. And when you will click the same icon here, it's going to appear on the right side. So this is really up to you guys, which is your preference. Now, closing up for now this window, if we go to the dock here, we have the show launcher, which is corresponding to the super key. We have the workspaces, which I showed you before. We have here the show applications button. This is a little bit similar to Mac OS on the launch pad, where you will see all your applications here. And you can see also Pop OS comes actually very light with programs. So we have basically the basic utilities here. We have Giri as an email client already pre-installed. We have the office suite, which is already including LibreOffice. You can change also, of course, the name. We have the pop shop. We have here the settings, some system utilities. We have the terminal, the text editor, some other utilities here and the weather. And that's it basically. So it's fairly light on applications. Now let me get out of here. We have Firefox already here pre-installed. We have the files manager. This is the Nautilus file manager from GNOME. We have the terminal and the pop shop and also our settings. Now here in the file manager, you can see it changes slightly some of the icons. For example, I can see here on the trash. I think it's slightly different than it was before. And all in all, it looks a little bit more minimalistic to my eyes, which is nice to have for me. Now let's open up the terminal here and let's type in, in here uname dash r. Now this is offering the 5.11 kernel, which is the same kernel available in Ubuntu 21.04. This is the latest kernel available there. So that's why we have it here also on Pop OS because it's based on Ubuntu. Now one note here is that with this kernel on any Debian distribution, as I already said on my monthly install of Arch for July 2021, Unfortunately, this kernel on Debian and Ubuntu-based distribution will not work on the Dell XPS 17 for the sound. You will get a dummy output device there. So if you want to have sound working there, you will have to build your custom kernel or you will have to install an alternative kernel that is compiled with the proper software. Now, I know 5.12 is going to work and 5.10 actually is also working, but 5.11 for some reason on Ubuntu-based distros is actually not working on that kind of laptop. I'm not sure about other LED laptops, but I've tested it on mine and it does not actually work. So let's close this window up here. Now, let me open up again the settings and you can see also, as I said before, we don't have any way here to change the theme. So why is that? Well, because actually the GNOME Tweaks is not installed by default. So we need to install that if you want to change the look and feel of your Pop! OS installation. So to do this, we can go, for example, to the terminal and type in, in here sudo apt update first to update our repositories. And this is going to take a moment. And there are already 13 packages that can be upgraded. So I'm going to do this later. But for now, I want to type in sudo apt install. And the package you're looking for is gnome-tweaks. And hit enter. And we can then install the package, which is fairly small. There you go. And now it's installed. So we can close this window and we can open up again here. We can actually search for it and type in here tweaks. You can see it appears there on the first row. We can hit control one here to start it up. And now we have the GNOME tweaks here. So here you can see the appearance tab, which we don't have anywhere else. And here you can choose other themes if you have them installed in your system. So for example, we can choose the Advaita Dark, which is coming already pre-installed here in Pop! OS, the cursor icons, also the shell. We don't have that available yet, but we could enable this extension and then also change the shell appearance here in Pop! OS. And we can change, of course, here other things as well. Here we can change, of course, also the fonts. We can change also settings for the keyboard and mouse. We can change also settings again for the top bar startup applications. We can also change options for the title bars, which we saw before as well, Windows and Workspaces. Some of these are actually the same options we saw before in the settings. Just here you have some extra ones, especially for the appearance of your desktop. So which version of the GNOME shell we have here? So let's open up the settings and go back to settings here and go back to about. 
And you can see here, we have actually the GNOME version is 3.3.8.5. This is the same version that we have on Ubuntu 21.04. And I think it's a prudent step for Ubuntu and also Pop! OS in this case, because if you're using certain extensions, they might not be yet compatible with the GNOME 40 shell. So right now we have this dock here, which belongs to Pop! OS Cosmic Desktop. And we have, of course, the dash to dock extension for GNOME, but it's not yet fully compatible with GNOME 40. There are some workarounds I've seen on the extensions page, but it's not yet officially available for GNOME 40. So it's a prudent step here to have 3385. And actually, Pop! OS implemented many of the features here their own way. So that means, for example, having the workspaces here available directly on the desktop without actually squashing the desktop to see them. It's, I think, a nice touch. Of course, this is all personal preference, but for example, then here we see the desktops and it's much easier to grab my window here and put it here on the second workspace, for example. So it's really a matter of personal preference, but I like to have these choices. And of course, the power of Pop! OS here is to have these new options and to have also the Pop! Shell, which allows you to basically tile your windows. So you've probably seen this already, but if I open up here a couple of windows, for example, like this, and I click here tile windows, you can see it spreads basically evenly the windows across the desktop, which is a very nice way to work if you are used to have, for example, a window manager, but you want to have also the convenience of having a desktop environment. Now we can click here again and turn them off if we don't want to have them. Now, I want to show you also the usage here for the memory. And if I open up the terminal and type in and here free dash H, you can see right now it's using 1.4 gigabytes of RAM out of eight. So I would say it's pretty heavy on usage, but probably this is also because of the extensions. I'm not completely sure, but this is what's happening here on my machine. Now, the other thing I would like to show you is if I type in LSPLK. Now, you can see here we have one disk in this machine, which is called VDA. And Pop! OS here created a EFI partition, which is almost 500 megabytes. Now, this is typical for Pop! OS. If you would have to create your partitions manually with Gparted during the installation, it will tell you that the EFI partition should be at least 500 megabytes. So keep this in mind if you want to actually partition your disk manually during the installation. Then we are going to have a four gigabytes recovery partition, which is going to help us to recover our system. We're going to have a third partition, which is our root partition here. And then we are going to have a fourth partition for the swap. You can see the swap partition is defined as a crypt swap. We don't have to type any password, but it's encrypted nevertheless. Now let's type in shortly cat slash etc slash fstab here. And let me go full screen because you can see better. And actually, let me clean this up and type it again. So here we can see what's in the fstab file for our MAN point. So we have our partition UUIDs here. We are not using the UUIDs, but the partitions UUIDs. We have here the mount point, the file system type, UMask is also defined, and the file system checks are all zero and zero in Pop! OS. The same goes for the recovery for the root partition, which by default comes formatted as an EXT4 file system type. We have some extra options here, no A time errors equal remount RO. That means by errors remount read only and also the file system checks here, zero and zero. And we have also our swap device, which is defined with the mapper device and its own options. So this is actually a quick overview of Pop! OS. Now, Pop! OS, as I said, it's one of my favorite distributions based on Ubuntu. And I really like what they have done here with the Cosmic Desktop. Now, again, this is all personal preference, of course. It will be up to you to try it out and see if you like it. But if you're using the GNOME Desktop environment and you're used to have a dock, I think you will like this implementation of the dock and you will like also this implementation of the workspaces. Again, try it out and let me know in the comments below what you think about it. For me, Pop! OS Cosmic Desktop, it's a nice release and I will probably test it out again on my laptop because I want to see how it plays with my NVIDIA card, even though I know it's not going to work out of the box with the sound devices, but that's not going to be an issue for me. So these are my first impressions about Pop! OS Cosmic Desktop. And if you try it out, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. 
So these are my first impressions about Pop! OS. I think it's a really nice distribution if you like the GNOME desktop environment, of course. And again, as I said in the intro, Pop! OS is one of my favorite Ubuntu-based distros because it also offers great support for NVIDIA cards out of the box. Now, I really like Pop! OS Cosmic Desktop. I think the implementation of certain features make the workflow, at least in my case, easier. And if you try it out, let me know in the comments below how do you like it, or if you're using it already, let me know also in the comments below why you like it. And I hope also that you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and sub to the channel if you haven't already. That always helps me out. And if you want to support my work, you can become a Patreon, or if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I really appreciate that, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.